Hello and welcome back to all those with ears tuned to sound. I am Peace Faris, your host, once again with a new album review. This time for you, we got the new Vampire Weekend album, Father of the Bride. This is the long-awaited studio release from the New York indie pop and rock outfit Vampire Weekend that have certainly been keeping us waiting for a long time. The last we saw of the band was back in 2013 with their release Modern Vampires of the City. It was an overall somber release for the band when compared to their first two albums, but no less captivating. Finally, earlier this year, the band teased us with a few singles that hinted at a more somber and stripped-back approach. And while not all of these singles won me over, they did definitely make me curious for this new release here. Hold You Now, the opening track starts off somber with Ezra, the main vocalist for the band, on just his acoustic guitar. It then gives way to these beautiful but yet eerie choir vocals that almost sound like they're reversed. The track features guest vocals from Danielle Heim of the band Heim and is a nice compliment to Ezra while she sings. Following the opener, we're given Harmony Hall, which was the number one single the band won me over with earlier this year. With nice plunky acoustic guitar, some piano, and some string bits later in the chorus, it offers a nice mix of instrumentation. The piano medley we get is a nice little touch along with the closing guitar solo to the song. The way the vocals on the chorus soar above the instrumentation makes you feel like you're floating with them. The following track, Bambina, is just too short and leaves you wanting more. It packs a lot into its short runtime of a minute and 43 seconds with these claps throughout and these infectious verses. It's too good of a tune to be this short. The next track, This Life, is one of the best on the album with this easy to sing along to chorus that will surely get stuck in your head. The overall atmosphere and mood of this track is very reminiscent of Van Morrison's Brown Eyed Girl and the guitars only reinforce that. The vocals layered in tremolo at the very end of the track are an excellent touch as well. So, with these first four tracks, the album gets off to a pretty good and propelling start, but in the middle of the album, it takes a little bit more of a different direction. Big Blue is a short little dud that's pretty boring, doesn't do much, and thankfully doesn't last too long. How Long is another track similar to Big Blue in that it's really slow and quite boring. This one does give us a little bit more instrumentally layered chorus with some extra bits thrown here and there, but sadly that still can't save this track from falling into the more forgettable side of the album. The track Unbearably White sadly follows in the same footsteps as the previous two tracks and give us only Its melody is both uninspired and lazy, and even the string bits peppered in throughout can't help it. And all the previously mentioned trends and vibes continue even on to the next few tracks. For the most part, they're all pretty forgettable and don't leave much of an impression on me. At the very least, I can say they were recorded and mixed well. It really isn't until the track Sympathy hits us and breathes life back into this album. And boy, oh boy, does this track have it in spades. This track is a musical defibrillator shocking almost every part of your body. It starts off with a bang and wakes you up with these crashing cymbals, these heavily strummed guitars, and these almost disembodied choir vocals. The song will occasionally stop with these little guitar flourishes throughout and then continues into the heavier instrumentation. Tons of interesting instrumental bits and layers throughout this song. And towards the end of the track, the instrumentation all starts to build around this pounding electronic beat, and then the percussion explodes ending out the song. The next track, Sunflower, is a little instrumentally less dense than the previous track and the vocal's a little more lazy, but that doesn't keep me from not enjoying the track. I like the ascending and descending vocal notes that Ezra and the featured vocalist Steve Lacey hit. The following track, Flower Moon, opens with these heavenly auto-tune and layered vocals. And the line about Coca-Cola and red wine, ooh, sends shivers down my spine. The rhyme was intentional. Sadly, the vocals on the chorus are a bit passionless from the guest vocalist, and the rest of the song, while it is mixed well, just can't match the beginning. The track We Belong Together contains an electric mandolin of all things and features Danielle Heim back on vocals again. The chorus on this one's real fun and gives me almost like a Renaissance Fair vibe. Danielle's vocals are once again a good compliment to Ezra's and lend to an overall fun little tune. 
Stranger is an upbeat tune with a well-layered recording and lots of varied instrumentation. Pedal steel, clarinet, and all other sorts of things make their way into the mix. The melody on this one is simple and easy to go along with, and I love it when the vocals join together and both sing Things have never been stranger Spring Snow starts off with these interesting vocal bits layered in auto-tune filters and all other sorts of effects, contains these nice little crashes of piano chords on the chorus. While the track is slow, it's interesting enough and keeps my attention unlike a lot of the tracks in the middle of the album. Now on Jerusalem, New York, Berlin, sadly my previous statement doesn't carry over. At its heart, it's a sweet little tune with some good lyrical imagery and some good solo piano accompaniment. While it is fundamentally not a bad song, I do find it a lackluster way to end the album on. Alright, so as you can see, there is a lot to this album, and I feel that's its greatest flaw. Clocking in at 58 minutes, it is Vampire Weekend's longest studio album and from what I believe, their most instrumentally packed as well. The start of this album is great with its soaring highs and somber lows, while the middle of this album is a trudge through the desert with only a few gleaming mirages in the distance to keep you company. And yes, while this thing does pick up towards the end and is recorded well and packed with lots of instrumentation, I feel it's far from a solid listening experience front to back. If in the studio they had given this thing a musical liposuction to the gut and taken away a few of the tracks, I feel we would really, really have something special here. As it stands though, there is a lot to love on this album, and I feel it sits just above average at a 6 out of 10. Was really hoping to be wowed by this new output from the band, and while it did deliver at some points on the album, overall I can't help but feel dissatisfied. And that has been Father of the Bride by Vampire Weekend. If you like what you heard, stick around, more coming. Let me know if there's anything you think I should listen to or check out. Subscribe, leave a like, all that fancy stuff. I'm your host, Peace Faris, signing off. Father of the Ride, Vampire Weekend. Sullivan, did you like the new Vampire Weekend album? Eat the pizza, mamma mia!